All right, 250.119, identification of equipment grounding conductors. So the changes here, the exception for limited energy circuits was revised to accommodate power over Ethernet. And re-identifying conductors is allowed in more applications. So we start with the general requirement here, 250.119. This has been in the code for a very long time, as we all know. Equipment grounding conductors of the wire type can be bare, or they must have an outer finish that's green, or green with one or more yellow stripes. So those are my equipment grounding conductors. As you can see, they're green. Nothing new here. Conductors with insulation that is green, or is green with a yellow stripe, or is bare for that matter, is not allowed for a grounded or neutral conductor or an ungrounded conductor. So here in our photograph, even if we taped these conductors black or red or blue, it would still be a violation because green is a conductor that we're not allowed to re-identify. So when it comes to ungrounded conductors, you can look at 210.5C, for example, and it says that you can re-identify ungrounded conductors, uh, regardless of what their size is. But you can't do that with green conductors. So if I've got green conductors, they have to be for grounding bonding purposes. A couple of exceptions. The first one, Cables for power limited or communication circuits that operate at less than 50 volts AC or 60 volts DC can use green conductors for other purposes. Okay, so this is where it's important to remember how the code works. Chapters, we're in chapter two, and chapter two applies to chapters one through seven. So what I mean by that is chapter eight does not have to follow the rules in chapter two. So chapter 8 covers, among other things, telephone wiring communications. So a telephone might operate at greater than 50 volts while it's ringing, 50 or 60 volts while it's ringing. Does that mean we can't use green conductors for telephone wiring because it would violate this rule? And the answer to that is no. Let's take a look again. Cables for power limited or communication circuits operating at less than 50 volts AC or 60 volts DC can use green. So again, telephones operate at higher than that, but they're regulated by Article 800 or in the 2020 code, Article 805, so they don't have to comply with this rule. This is talking about signaling circuits or power limited circuits like power over ethernet, and that's really why this rule changed. Power over ethernet can operate uh, up to 57 or 58 volts DC, I don't remember which, 57 or 58. So this used to say 50 volts, which meant that you couldn't use an ethernet cable for power over ethernet. So it was revised to catch up on that. The other exception that we have is kind of an oddity, and you really have to rack your brain to, to catch it. A flexible cord whose outer jacket doubles as conductor insulation can also be green. And there's an informational note that I kind of paraphrase that says a green SPT-2 cord is an example of this. So that's a green cord, but the cord insulation itself is also the conductor insulation. So that's a green conductor, and we can't have green conductors unless they're equipment grounding conductors. So this exception was added a few code cycles ago, basically to allow green cords. Exception three this was also put in a few years ago. I think this is my friend Tom Baker up in uh, Washington to put this in. For traffic signals, green can be used as an ungrounded conductor, but we still have to have an equipment grounding conductor installed as well. As you might guess, the standard operating procedure for traffic signals is you use a red wire for the red light, a yellow wire for the yellow light, and a green wire for the green light. You don't use green as the equipment grounding conductor. So this exception was put in to recognize that that's been the case for a very long time, has a good track record, so there you go. The other thing that changed here is subsection B. A conductor in a multi-conductor cable can be re-identified by stripping the entire exposed portion of the insulation, or coloring the insulation green, or encircling the insulation with green tape. So looking at this picture here, in supervised industrial locations, or I think it actually said, you know, where only qualified persons service the installation, you could have used a red wire as your equipment ground and taped it green. But that was only allowed where 
Quali where conditions of maintenance and supervision ensure that only qualified persons service the installation. That's no longer required. So I could re-identify this now in residential, in commercial, it wouldn't matter as long as it gets re-identified. So we can actually kind of reduce the requirements when it comes to 250.119B and the re-identification of conductors in cable assemblies.